Hello, in this video we're going to prove that the Pearson's chi-square goodness of fit test statistic approximately follows a chi-square distribution. I'm going to keep it in the playlist hypothesis testing, but I'm also going to put it in the transformations playlist. Here's a, an example. Roll in a six-sided die. Let's let X be the accumulated roll, roll totals from N rolls. So X is, has components you know, 1 through 6 where each XJ is the total number of J's, so for instance, the total number of 1's or 2's or 6's rolled out of the N rolls. X follows a multinomial distribution. Um, let's call it MULT with parameters N, P1, P2, through P6, where N is the number of rolls. PJ is the probability of rolling a J. You know, so P2 would be the probability of rolling a 2. And I have a video called multivariate normal distribution as an approximation to the multinomial distribution. And there we prove that if it follows a multinomial distribution, that it limits in distribution. So if this is a multinomial distribution, it limits in distribution to a multivariate normal distribution with parameters n times p and n times sigma, where p is the vector of probabilities and sigma down the diagonal is pi times 1 minus pi. And the off diagonals, it's minus PI times PJ. And I'm going to point you back to this video to see more detail and all the derivations, derivations associated with that. So following the example that we did up here, the null hypothesis would be the die is fair. That means each probability has one-sixth chance of being rolled versus the alternative hypothesis that the die is biased. Now the test statistic for Pearson's goodness of fit test is x squared is equal to this sum. So we're summing over each category, so each component of x, subtracting the expected value of that component and dividing by the expected value of that component. And the expected value of each component is n times pi, so that's what we hear. And this is it. And it actually works for you know, K categories. Doesn't have to be six like in our die uh, example. But this is it. This is the, the Pearson's goodness of fit test statistic. And we want to show that this follows a chi-square distribution. So the theorem, we're going to say Pearson's goodness of fit test statistic approximately follows a chi-square distribution. So let's go through this. The proof is this. So X, which is the multinomial distribution, uh, limits and distribution to a multivariate normal with mean NP and variance covariance matrix N sigma. And again, I'm going to point you to that video that we mentioned earlier. Multinomial distribution has an approximation to the multinomial distribution. Now here, this is the mean. So if we subtract the mean from our vector X, oh, and I'm going to do this in general. In our example, we had six categories, but here we're going to assume there's K categories. So if we subtract the mean, then the distribution of this is still limits to a multi multivariate normal distribution, but it has a mean zero and the same variance covariance matrix. Now we need to define some vectors and matrices. So P, remember, is the the probability so p1 through pk in this instance so let's define p to the one half which means we take the square root of each component so it's the square root of p1 all the way to the square root of pk that's p to the one half now let's create a diagonal matrix so this is a k by k matrix and down the diagonals is one over the square root of n times pi. So the first component, it's the square root of n times p1, and then the last diagonal element is 1 divided by the square root of n times pk. So now, if we take d, so let's let y equal d times this right here. Remember, this was a multivariate normal, so taking the d out front, then it's d times the mean of this, which was it's still zero, 
and this D matrix, you know, it gets encompassed, incorporated into the variance covariance matrix. So it's actually D out front times sigma times D transpose, but it's a diagonal matrix, so it's symmetric. So I just leave off that tick. Now this here is this right here. So it, zero, the mean comes down. This is the identity matrix minus P to the one half times P to the one half transpose. And I'm going to illustrate this in these next three lines, why that is equal to this. So YI, now remember Y, the vector Y follows this. But let's look at one component called YI. And that is, you know, the component of XI, this component, and then times, you know, the diagonal, which is the square root of NPI. So this is one of the components in there. So let's look at the mean. So we take the mean, and the only random part is this x. So it goes into that. But the expected value of xi is in pi. So that subtracts, and it becomes 0. Right? So that's why there's it's a mean vector of 0. Now the covariance of yi and yi, which is really the variance of yi. Um, so here is yi. So the constant here comes out front squared, and this constant doesn't factor into the variance, so it's just the variance of xi. And so, yeah, so this is squared. So npi times, and the variance of xi is np1 minus p, or, you know, pi. Well, the n and the pi cancel, and we're left with 1 minus pi, which is what we get here, down the diagonals. Right? This is a vector of the square root of pi. And this is transpose, so it creates a matrix. And down the diagonal, this matrix has pi as a component. And then the one from that is this. Now the covariance of yi and yj, so that means this piece comes out squared, you know, or the n does. And then we have the square root of pi and the square root of j. And then we have the covariance, what's in the middle here. But the constants don't factor into covariance. So we just have the covariance of xi and xj. And we showed in that video I was talking about that it's minus n pi pj. So we get some cancelizations here. The n's and the square root of this cancels with one of those, leaving minus the square root of pi pj. And that's exactly what you get here. That's the, remember, because the off-diagonals are all zero, so this matrix is, is come, the off-diagonals are, you know, have this form. So now we want to define an orthogonal matrix, call it Q, which has the first column P to the one-half. So, you know, the first component is P, square root of P1, the next one is square root of P2, all the way to square root of PK. Now we're going to create these, other k minus 1 vectors that make this orthogonal. Okay, so we can do it. So it's a k by k mat orthogonal matrix. Now notice that if we take p to the 1 half transpose times p to the 1 half, that's 1. And since it's orthogonal, this vector dotted with any of these others is 0. And any of these b vectors dotted with itself so bi transpose bj is a 1 if i and j equal 0 otherwise. That's kind of what an orthogonal matrix is. So now let's look at let's another transformation called w. And let's equal q transpose y, where q is this matrix here and y we defined up there. So it also limits in distribution to a multivariate normal distribution because the y did. And it has a mean times, you know, Q transpose, but it was already zero. So zero times Q transpose, zero. And then it comes into the variance covariance matrix like this. Now, you know, because it's Q transpose out front and Q out back, you know, the 
and that's the what we said the make covariance matrix was you know a second ago so we multiply the Q matrices in and we get this and then we multiply them in here notice that I put a transpose out here right because the Q to the one half transpose Q but you can kind of transpose that group and you get this the reason I do this is because Q transpose times this every row times this it's it's one on the first row and it's zero otherwise so it becomes this and this is since it's or, uh, orthogonal that's the identity matrix and this is the vector e, e1 where e1 is all zeros except it has a one in the first component that's what this is and this one too it transpose now this matrix is um, it's it's basically a matrix that has a one in the top left corner otherwise it's zero so that means the variance covariance is it's the identity matrix but that first component is zero and that says that w1 has a mean of zero and a variance of zero so it's unquestionably zero it's not a random variable it's zero and all other components of W all other WJ limit and distribution to a standard normal right because this is the rest of this matrix it has ones down the diagonal and and all the off diagonals are zero so every WJ limits and distribution to a standard normal distribution that's for J uh, you know 2 to K so now let's look at this this uh, vector multiplication. So W transpose W is really the sum of the WJs. But remember, W1 was 0. So we can start from 2 and go to K. And each one of these um, is, is a chi-squared. So a W... W is standard normal, so if you square it, it becomes a chi-squared, and they're independent, so the sum of independent chi-squares is chi-squared, so this is a chi-squared with K to my, or K minus 1 degree, uh, degrees of freedom. It limits to that in distribution. But let's look at a little more detail of W transpose W. We plug in what W is. W was this. I mean, well, W was Q transpose Y, and then so W transposes this. But this is the identity matrix. So we just get Y transpose Y. And so that's the sum of the YI from 1 to K. But YI was this, you know, squared. But this is the chi-square goodness of fit test statistic, which we call X. But we said that follows a chi-squared with k minus 1 degrees of freedom. So the test statistic is a chi-squared with k minus 1 degrees of freedom. And the proof is finished. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.